to this day with us. Good afternoon, people. How are you? I'm not your mic, Karen. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. You know, I've got so confuffled. I've not <laughs> seen Richard. I've just seen his name. But I've not seen Richard. So you know, I've got confuffled. He has the yeah. camera type of thing that has to warm up. <laughs> oh, I see. But I know he's hearing me all now. Yes, Richard? Yes, yes he's hearing you. All right. Well, I'm happy as usual to be with you and Paul one two. I will give you all a joke, though. Yeah. I was on another show, um, yeah. I think last week, and somebody called in. They have a call-in section, yeah. television show. <laughs> and the person then said, yes, I like hearing her. I like listening to her on mm, station and one or two <laughs> FM in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. <laughs> he said, and I had to tell the, um, the, the other presenters that I had nothing to do with that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but it was just rushed that in. And one or two FM in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> You got a free ad on another station. Yes, man. That's the power of one or two digital. I'm telling you. <laughs> the person caught me by surprise. They were, yeah. you know, very encouraging, I have to say. Nice. You know. Nice. <laughs> nice. I haven't gotten, I haven't gotten what I call a, um, I haven't got a buff, you know. You know, yeah. this is the country of buffs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I have, but I don't realize it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I doubt. I doubt. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! I will choose. What I will do is um choose ignore it. Yes, and Richard. I will give you another joke because I'm waiting for Richard to appear. You know. Yes. Uh, um, on another radio station for which reasons best known to themselves, and I don't think you'd have to guess hard which mm. one it would be. Yeah. I used to be um, welcome there, and then all of a sudden, it seems I'm persona non grata. <laughs> but um, for quite a while, I've, I've never been quite given the reason why, but I worked it out. I think we can all work it out. But the joke about it was that while I was going through, I guess, all the challenges of CL and Clico, mm -hmm. and what I was uh, there still as minister, mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying they had an agenda, but they certainly had a point of view. Yeah. And it was a point of view that I should not be minister at all. Hmm. So they would come, I understood, would come and say, she's still there, she's still there. So I would give you the joke. So one day, about, say about two years later, um, someone who was in the interviewing panel said to me, so how did you feel about all the negative things that were being said about you doing that period? I said, I never listened to them. <laughs> I said, you know, because... You know, I didn't want it to affect me because the person who was in particular saying she's still there, yeah. I understood that it is said, no, it is alleged, so yeah. it's just hearsay. Yeah. It's alleged that he said, what's wrong with that? Um, she's always smiling, smiling. And the reason I was always smiling is because I didn't hear anything you said about me. <laughs> 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 I never heard, and I, and I made a point of saying on the show, I never heard anything that was said, so you know, <laughs> <put it> back. <laughs> you, you know the opposite of hate is not love, you know. Yeah, I do. It, it, it's indifference. When you're indifferent as a person, they can't take that, you know. No. <laughs> but you wouldn't know about, who's not laughing. Is that, uh, that That's man, David. Or, yes, David. David, David. Yeah. But you wouldn't know about that. But I could tell you, that's the worst thing, you know. You know, when... Um, getting ignored you know when your husband come home uh, or all kinds of quality hours as we'll say in Trinidad yeah. you know you're up you're crying you're bawling maybe pan, pot breaking mm -hmm. you know okay well you know and all kind of thing where you went and so on <laughs> go on with that for about a few more months when you come home you find a snow in a sleep you know you start to get worried <laughs> <laughs> but we don't know anything about that because it is only an example when she has that strong emotion that yeah. of what comes out as hatred. Yeah. It is really because she feels strongly about the person. Yes. When yes. you you are indifferent to them, it is the most painful thing to them because they want you to to care yeah. in some way or you want you to respond. Yeah. And so in that case, which your viewers I'm sure can relate to. If they see that happen, they start to get frightened and get worried. Something up. Yeah. <laughs> I told you, listening to me and saying anything. I've seen you now. <laughs> He's there now. 
Yes, Mr. He's... Richard. Mr. Norrie, unmute your microphone, please. Richard. Richard, are you hearing me? You're not hearing from Richard something. Let me see. Let's see if I'll pick him up now. I sent huh? him a message. Yeah? I sent him a message to unmute his mic. Yeah. Yes, he's here with us now. Good afternoon, Hello. Richard. Hello, Mr. Shera. Oh, yeah, we're going, we're going to get formal now. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I was just now trying to sorry. put something here. Yeah, oh, so we have to do it now, yeah. Okay, I know you are a man of many parts. I have come to recognize that uh, and well-known. And, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. And anytime one has um, public ambition in whatever area it is, whether it is in to be a movie star, I never know him. I want to be a movie star. What oh, Karen, you, uh, you, you what, 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 don't, 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 don't start with any fool. No, 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 Anyway, I glad for you, Eric. Who was, who was he, the I star in Matrix? Who was the star in Matrix? You could be that lady, Karen. I okay, can't remember. Okay, yeah, but that wasn't the point I was making. No, I, I, I wasn't was, making that point, no. All right. But I, I'm coming yeah. into the philosoph philosophical thing of using examples. Because as a teacher, which I spend most of my life doing, um, how you could always reach to your student is by giving an example and they will say, oh, oh, no, you know, and they can relate to um, what you're seeing. But anyway, the point I was very just making, just uh, awaiting your, um, your presence, was um, that they say in that one, anyone in public life, the worst thing, is no news. They don't mind if it got bad news because at least it's, it's like Kamala right now. He's still eat a food day. Eh? That's mm. how she got on the front page or whatever page. And that's how she keeps being thing. If she starts to be too too um gracious and too um constrained in our environment, you might say, but why is she doing that? Or is she doing that because she wanna make sure she got any papers? Yeah, politicians tend to do most of what they do for headlines the next day, you know. Very they love the press, you know, Karen. But they Sometimes have you to, wonder uh, why a politician saying what he's saying is to grip the headlines the next day, you know? Well, you know, um, Richard, I mean, there is a lot of um, value in it because you, oh, he, the, the catchphrase that has not gone wrong is, oh, he or she is no longer um, relevant, you know? And people, if you stay out of the And that's fair line, commentary. That's fair commentary. Yeah. And, but yeah. if you stay out of the limelight long enough, mm -hmm. people forget who you are. And well, early, 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 Karen. Exactly. So if that's not your yeah. intent, if that is not your intent, then you've got to grab some hair headlines because yeah. the headlines, yeah, you're going to have to do it. But I, I um, don't know what you had in mind, but certainly that was... you yeah, get to that just some, but if you sell the headline when you're a politician for a month and a half, when they yes. say after that, you know, they say you're trying to make a comeback, you know? <laughs> well, you know that's free for people to think that you know um because the fact of the matter is that if you want to get your message heard, you've got to be um you have got to reach the public and the mechan mechanisms yeah. are there if the consequence of that is, and it happens to me every day now actually i mean i i could tell you that is, is a fact i think one of the reasons why i have not um faded into oblivion and many people would have, is not only because of the property tax, which they don't mention my name anyhow in relation to that, or CLF, I'm not mentioned in relation to that either. It is because I have chosen, I have chosen the last two years to come out of my wherever bubble and decide to make the kind of contributions that I think I should be making. And as a result of which, it has made me more uh, very public. I don't go anywhere without people not recognizing you and up to this afternoon, you know? And it's a good thing because a lot of times you get um, positive, the kind of responses from people who you would hardly think would give you that response. And that is very encouraging. You know? Karen, you are one of the persons, one of the rare ones whom we have in this country, that when you speak, the, the, the majority of people in our country tend to listen. You tend to get people's undivided attention. And that's because of how wonderful you are, eloquent you are, 
well researched. Now that's the truth. You know, people believe that when they hear from Karen, they're hearing something of substance. You know, even if they disagree with you, they will true. still believe the presentation was a good one to be considered. It's true. You are it's like a, a solid uh, alarm bell when you it's speak. That people want to know what is happening. You know, Karen is 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 that's the kind of feedback I get. You know, because after well, you I, finish, I, 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 I that's the kind of feedback you know, I get. So that's true. You know, yeah. I I get that everywhere I go. You know, uh, that's what I Mrs. get. Shera, Miss. Karen, I mean, they call it from all sides their name. She yeah, really good, you know, yeah. We should do this. I like the angle she take. That is this. And I was trying to say it, but she said it for me and all kind of stuff. So, I mean, yeah. sometimes I started asking them, so I didn't say it for you. Too. I mean, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault. It's no, no. Stop complimenting me. Stop complimenting no, me no. and shine, shine any light on me like that. <laughs> no but kind, I am yell. grateful. I'm grateful for yeah. it, though. You are a wonderful person upon whom to have the radar placed because, yes. you know, yes, you, you, you could, um, how should I say, with your beauty, uh, clear up <laughs> any proof. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Richard, let us leave yeah. that up. I'm very grateful that you yeah. think that of me and I, um, and women, no matter if I laugh and I laugh it off. Um, you have been so consistent with that that I'm going to start to believe you on it. But we Karen, know I know of no other lovely <laughs> mature lady in this country like you, who looks like you and and conducts themselves like you and song like you and yet still. Well, thank so, you, thank you. No, really, really. Well, I mean, you, you are seldom partly incorrect, you know. Seldom. <laughs> And then I will which always, say, you know what it which is. is to say you are often correct, Karen. Your perspectives, yeah. So it's yeah, good. And I think, which I think, I think, just so for what you want us to discuss initially and think, I think it is because I feel genuinely that I owe that if I'm going to come on any um, public forum, that I owe it to people to be honest and truthful because i have nothing to gain which they may, you know and of course all people people say that so they don't have to believe me with that but uh, there's no indication that i have anything to gain I, there's a teacher in me my grandfather actually was a, i got that teaching thing in must be in my dna but it's not really teaching you know you know these people who are in politics you know and we are dealing with a, the current um political group they are so misleading in what they say it's so unfair to and especially the um the persons more uh, who make up the l l bulk of our our country you know and that they tell them things that are just not um true and they have their agenda they have the interlocking relationships they have all kinds of things going on which are not seeking the interest of them, you know, and they don't understand that. So when I, they don't really understand that that that, that is what's happening to them, that they're being used, used by a small group of people to advance their own interests. And when yeah. they get any um, pushback on it, they come out hard. But the problem with me up to now, knock wood, has been that, as you've said, I strive to rely on the facts and I'm, enti I'm entitled to give it my interpretation. That is a reasonable one. And I am not saying everyone has to accept it, but, um, you know, they want you to take things and, to, you know, and, 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 it's, and you know who it is? They're treating people like the village idiots. Like if they have village idiots written on their things, you know, how long are you going to take advantage of the poorer classes how long are you going to be doing this since 1962 we we got independence for a reason my god you know we got independence it's not just to continue continue and and, and i've always i've said this and i think sometimes you when we went forward do we have a guess no no that oh. that one that you are seeing there that is the one that the the, the professional ruben mohammed who has oh. us on facebook and on all the social media, you know. Right. So people are seeing us, Karen. That's why we must turn on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Once you see that there, it means 
We are on live, you know. Right. I mean, they call me from England. They call me from Germany. Ask Daddy Mac. America, not so Daddy Mac. Yeah, Daddy Mac. That's it. Because I don't. After I do this show, I we we um did Daddy Mac come to sleep, eh? Daddy Mac gone in the room. Daddy no, no. Mac. Daddy, yeah, Daddy Mac. Mac eh? No, you have to call Daddy Mac now. Tell him to no, unmute. He's... <laughs> no, when it comes back, sometimes but anyway, you know, the point is when yeah. you will say what are the things you want to discuss it. My um position I'm um, I'm uh from uh duty I feel, a duty I feel, and that's the strong I can go even stronger than duty. Um that the persons who are being taken advantage. I don't like to see people being taken advantage of. I don't like to see people being used. And, you know, you're doing it over and over and over again. But guess what? You may not like Karen to share, but I'm going to tell you. And then you will think about it. And maybe she say, you know, you know, she's making a point. You know, she's making a good point. They don't want you to hear that, you know. They don't want no, you to I... step out. No, they don't want that. They don't want you to change your mindset. You know? They want you to stay right where you are. Think That's about it. that. But anyway. tell them, Karen, tell them it doesn't matter what they say. After we come off air and they play it back in the head, or something happens to them, then they come to the, the, the reality or the realization that you know what they were hearing from Karen, it it, it 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 is more likely to be true than anything else because look at what happened. You know, Karen really said that. So and that's why it's good to say it. they may not appreciate it now, but they may later on. And I want to remove the word me, they will later on, because it's only a sense or degree of reluctance to accept. What you say now, because what you are saying to them means they have to change something that they are doing right now. And they may also be unwilling to change that at this time. You understand? But they hear you. And every day as they sleep on it, a lot more people are moving away from that position they held and, and, and calmly making their way over to the place where they ought to be at. And I think they are getting there. I think I, what I do think I, I see a change, which I would not have seen maybe two or three years ago, you would meet um, persons who fall into that whole group of the um, child kings of this world, I call them, you know? Mm -hmm. And they, you, you see them having a eureka moment where suddenly the, um, the lens, or the, the eyes are really being opened a little bit. And, and, and to the point that they're realizing, well, maybe we are being used maybe we are there to allow that 10% to fulfill, continue to gain wealth, but we are not just being taken care of, like we're the children in the family who didn't do well, so we're giving you a handout. They wanted, they want, told me that 10 years ago, but now I've woken up now and realized it's not that. They want to have the cheap labor, keep going, and they want to be able to have those same people available for the informal sector. As I'm saying that, Argentina, you know, Argentina, they're a big, um, they foreign, their money is worth nothing. Now they have no money. They have their currencies worth no, um, um, nothing. And that is because, may, um, from what I understand, it was because they said within a week, you saw the, I don't know if it's, I can't is it Bolivar? I don't know the name of the currency. People started black, um, um, hoarding the U.S. dollars because, the whole new US dollars. And as people saw the economy going into a nosedive, then more hoarding of US dollars. And of course, if you want to buy anything outside, you've got to have it. And so the price, their money has gone, is worth nothing. But this is what they've said. And this is what a lot of the marching was about. They have said that what they want the government, not so much to give up uh, uh, um, uh, the minimum wage, because that minimum wage is very, very, um, a very distorting fact. Because if I could only get four hours of work for the week from CPEP, what does it matter if the minimum wage is giving me 70, 50? What am I going to do with that? Right? They say they should give a living wage. They are asking the government to give them what is a living wage. And it's when you, um, because all this is speculation on what our poverty level is, all this is speculation about what is the level of underemployment. All of this is right because they don't want to have the National Statistical Institute because that's what I was also reading about um, Standard and Poor's most recent IMF report. 
that they're pushing government and our own uh, is one of them to have a proper on time, not um, um, not um, two a year later. What are you going to do with our data? What are you doing on data? Right? On time, relevant data that can inform your policy direction. But you see, when they if they had to do that, they would expose themselves for the, for the, for the untruths that they tra- perpetuate all the time. Because you can't argue if I could say I read one of the opposition members saying that the poverty level is 20%. Well, you know, I don't know where he got it from. Obviously, he was speaking on the, on as he was walking. But it's if you can give me how you got it to 20%, that's why the National Statistical Institute should be independent of government interference and allow the as technocrats to give a government the data they need to plan and make policy. But they don't want us to know the truth. They don't want you to know. Because the persons who are underemployed, the persons who do not have a living wage, as the young as the man said, which is true, live, living from pay, so not pay better, from meal to meal. The person that they're growing in numbers and they don't want you to know the truth. While they drink the Johnny Walker black and in Moet and Chardon, it's not Moet, it's Moet, but we won't go into why I know it is Moet. Moet and Chardon, they want to live that Clico life, um, uh, Clico the, the, the champagne. They want to live that life, like which has happened with the, um, I'm not saying this, not bringing down anything on the country, but that's what happened with um, with um, the Industrial Revolution, Bastille, living in behind. I have visited, I don't know when you were in France, if you ever got a chance to go to the Palais de Versailles. When you go there, you see for yourself the, the vulgarity of wealth that was there. And all these courtesans, I mean, not courtesans, because that's a courtesan is a prostitute, but all these are courtiers, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, literally outside the gate, in the winter, children starve and mothers not able to feed their, ch- their children. And, you know, what, what I think is that, you know, as I say, it's not poverty, because if all of us poor, we're all in the back, we're all suffering. But when I see you living this lifestyle, am I like the government not doing anything to uplift me, but giving me some little something that can't mind a, a, a part on a stick? I must wake up one day and say to myself, but you know, Maybe that woman talking some sense, you know. Maybe. That is the idea. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. You and know. perhaps what is required is for some of those persons who are living with the big pack to, to, to find themselves in other communities where they could see equally the vulgarity of wealth in Trinidad. Mm-hmm. And as they could see for themselves, mm-hmm. those are the people whom the government is concentrating on to give more wealth mm-hmm. to. And as mm. they give them more wealth, they are squeezing those people who are packed up like sardine, less mm. and less, suffer more, so that the government will not even consider a living wage for them. The government would want to hold on to minimum wage for them, which is a, a smaller amount of money when compared to a living wage. A living wage will take uh, most of the essential things into account. Perhaps retail price index. Every, yeah, of course, the retail price index. And therefore, that is where, that is what they could call a minimum wage, which will be a living wage. You understand? Yeah, and I want to tell you something as you go on this. You see, this is the the kind of obscurity and the kind of, you know, which I, you know, it, it, it is that that pushes me to do what I do, you know. I was on another show now. It was, I don't think he has any because he said it publicly. I just hope I'm, quoting him correctly, and I think I may be quoting him, Dr. Botowari. Now, you know, not a, um, I personally am friendly with him for way back when he was principal of the um, laws of um, UE, and that's that, but I don't allow that to get into my bigger vision. But he said this, uh, and this was, he said he talked about housing, and I remember he was Minister Planning and Housing, and he went back he says there are 150,000 people waiting for houses still. That's number one. But number two, he said, now I don't know how far back he went, but he said based on the numbers of persons who have been asking, uh, requesting housing based on, on their financial status, it's only they've only fulfilled 2% of that need. So uh, 2% of that need, who are you fooling? 
You see, they don't want you to know that. They don't want you to know that. The body, what they want to go out there and tell you how much house they give you to live in. And you know what they said also? Right? Yeah. You know what I said? And, that's, uh, and that was a very good point. I don't know who it was that raised it. They didn't say it, but I read it somewhere um, very recently. Uh, actually, I think it came from, um, which was surprising. I think it came from the current Minister of Planning. I was very curious that she's, she or the Minister of Housing would have actually um, articulated that because it's really reflected poorly on them as far as I'm concerned. She's saying, oh, we have to, quite apart from the fact that um, people have not been paying a lot of indebtedness, 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 and so on. She's saying, this is how she put it, um, that they will no longer be concentrating on middle income housing, but focus their finances on the lower income. But that is what you should have been doing all the time. Let the TTMF, that's let the TTMF the only deal with them. That will not be done. They know what is the correct thing to say. You know, they have been saying it for quite a while. But I did not say the right thing, um, Richard, because if you say the reason yeah. why you cannot fulfill the housing needs of those oh, in well, the low income no, class. Huh? Yeah, I, I, I understand that. That's not the part But I want the enough. viewers and your listeners yeah. to understand it too. It's not for me yeah. to understand it, you know. I understand yeah. it, you know. Yeah. A te if a yeah. teacher don't understand what they're teaching, they shouldn't be teaching, you know. I'm saying it, <laughs> right, so I'm saying it to them, for them to understand what she really said. What she really yeah. said to you was that these houses that they built, the one near Federation Park and the one near Victoria, Q, Victoria, as you go in, Digo Martin, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, have which came under HTC. Yeah. What are you building those housing for if you haven't been only able to... Um, provide for only 2% in it and you have 150,000. What are you doing doing that? And and the yeah. one in um, St. Augustine opposite the law school, right? Yeah. Let yeah. them go to TTMF and let TTMF give them preferential rates and work it out. But when it comes to housing and then you go on the platform and those same people raising the balise who asking for a house for the last 10 years and begging the MP for a house, and God forbid they from the wrong constituency. They can't even get a piece of land. They and they, and then they go ahead land. and 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 after you don't figure, don't you figure something is wrong? Isn't something wrong that they took taxpayers' money and now an agency it used to be NHS before, but we the same up thing of taking the low income up, lift them, giving them housing, right, and mm -hmm. using it to build Federation Park townhouses using it to build a whole uh, i mean expansive um it looked like private it, 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 it's not private it looked like a private sector development like victoria cues or whatever you call it and the one opposite these um you wouldn't know a school in st augustine it, you know how much one of those houses are that maybe could have built three of your houses and yet you're going waving waving why don't you ask what are you doing building those houses that's taxpayers' dollars. What is what is it? Why are you doing that for? But they don't ask that. You see, that's not a question to ask. The question to say is, we built two. Uh, we had a thing of two thousand houses for twenty twenty two, and we have full, gone beyond it long. But they're not going to tell you. They're not, and you and you're just sucking it up. Karen, you don't tell, see it being tell used. Listeners, tell oh. our listeners why they wouldn't want to tell you what you're saying. They don't want to tell you. Why they don't want to tell them? Why they don't want to? You are saying they don't want to tell them. They, they would say oh, they would oh say, well, they lose their support. Because unfortunately, or fortunately, and I will say more fortunately, definitely, because I definitely would not want to live in a country where there's a dictatorship in the real sense of the word that you have one party state and for life you are the president. Every man's vote is equal. So you could be the president of whatever and as long as I do, I think maybe convicts, I think they have some exceptions, uh, I think. But you could be the poorest who's living in a little hut, right? Your one vote yeah. is equal to his vote. So yeah. they understand by our system, our system of electioneering, it's how by constituency, who wins, which party wins the most votes. And they understand that in most of the constituencies, the vast percentage of the persons living in those constituencies 
uh, I'm taking away party allegiances, which would make them vote however they're going to vote anyhow. But for, uh, for many of them who are not so blinded by party allegiance, they vote, they make up the vast majority of the population of the constituency, and yet they're the ones that suffer the most. The road not fixed. And you know, and people, and you know what is the hurtful thing? The hurtful thing. I'm saying this as, as, a, as, a, uh, as a former in politics and a former minister. I could never see myself talking down to people as if they are beneath me. And if what they what their position they are in, from angels to whatever you call them, and and speaking about people in such a contemptuous way, I I I, I could I, that's not your job to do that. There are plenty of middle class people who are willing to do that job for you. You your job when those people in that constituency, who the vast majority of them are lower income or lower middle class. That's the vast majority. They are not wealthy. Else we would have just in numbers percentage wise, right? We know that is that's not the vast majority. And they only have one vote. As much money as they have, they only have one vote. And yet you insult them and insult them by 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 misleading them as though you're doing anything for them. Y yes, get them a URP. Yeah, get them a CPEP. Because they think that is what they are, that is that is their thing. So they trade in their CPEP and your RP and evict when you talk out. Listen, the government is there to lift you up, to take you out of poverty. And I am I am not saying they can do everything, but I am sure if they went to lending an agency, especially in this time of COVID-19 and UNDP development goals and all of those other factors and even the country making um, our money. Um, I am sure that you can take off a hive of a greater chunk of that and devote it to creating a sphere for these um, people to show that you really do care, but you don't really, I say you really don't care. I say you care about those at the top. And I say what you really like to do. I have, I'm sure I could go by OWP downstairs, down where they lie. Or any residents, or maybe they don't go any residents. Maybe they want to be seen. You know, they want to be seen. So I think I go there, and you see them on a Friday drink, having a drink, a thing, playing it itself. Everybody just see them. They bought a boss man. They, you know, they they looking good. They, I think, yeah, preening themselves, and so much people suffering. That you think you're doing something for me as a politician? You should not be in politics. Go on, don't be involved because you don't care or you don't care enough. Yeah. Karen, you said that, um, you know, if they were to tell the people, they would lose their base. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. What, would, what would the people hear if they would lose their base? What you are saying in effect is if the people were to hear what they are not being told now, if they were to hear it, it, it there would be something in there that would cause the people to walk away from the current administration. Could you share with the people why they would want to walk away from well, the Well, two things will happen, you know, and that's yes. why I know I have a way of going around the garden path to make a point, but it's always because it's it's ready to um to, to be ready. Everything is a contact. Everything I am is here. Contact. I am here after you go around the garden to make sure <laughs> that it's the inside of it, Karen. <laughs> okay, so yeah, everything you know I mean. everything is um, context and where we are globally in geopolitics and in where we are as a nation and things. So everything has to be contextualized from the early days of um, Paul, uh, Eric Williams to where we are now. Okay, so that's one mm -hmm. thing I would see because one way people show that was the thirty three the time when there was a no no vote campaign and people mm -hmm. just did not come out and vote. You remember that year with um, when Eric yes, Williams was still there? Yes. There was so much. Um, I mean, they couldn't even hide the level of um, corruption within the party. There was a no vote campaign, and I think um, there was. Um, I, I don't want to get the percentage wrong, but it was very low. That was one of the things, and I think um, the other way they did it was when they got an alternative. That's what they an alternative and an alternative does not necessarily have to be another party because the pnm is a good party it's is a leadership and Very if, good. You doubt, if you doubt it's not the leadership you look at um trump 
an impact Trump still has on that country that they had to tell you that his wife, his daughter, and the Republican a, Party, huh? On the Republican Party, yes. At, even and the daughter at, was begging him to tell them. To, and they said the only way those people would stop was if he told them to go home. And it took two mm -hmm. hours before he actually said it. And as he said it, they listened him. So don't ever underestimate. Look at Putin in Russia. Mm -hmm. Right? So one, don't ever, ever underestimate the power of the leader. So I will say for those people who are in a, between a rock and a hard place because the choices are very minimal, what you need is a different leadership. Once you have the right leadership, he's going to put together or she's going to put together the right team. And yes, with any team, you're going to have issues because people have ambitions and all kinds of other issues that you don't know about and find out about eventually. But you need to either people know about, which I don't think I would recommend that because they will still be, they're still, um, they're still. Daddy, ma. Yeah, don't know what happened there. Yeah. She just froze up. Karen, if you're able to hear us still, reload your page. Seems like she's not hearing us. Yeah. Let me see if I can WhatsApp her. Okay. All right. She's re she's reloading her page. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's quite a topic you guys have chosen to to speak about today. And um, she spoke about the the um. The events that are turning around in um, Argentina and over the weekend I was um looking at what is happening in Sri Lanka mm -hmm. yeah and um that post I sent you while I was um looking at it somebody sent me that I don't know who it is really sent right me, it was sent and I said look at that I was just looking at this um by the news it was like this is what the doctor guy did the video yes yeah, and, um, I think it was interesting. I saw it some time ago. Yeah. And I went through it and I felt uh, he was spot on. Yes, and we have to be careful yeah. because we are right mm -hmm. within that kind of zone. Same thing, same thing. It's selling out the resources of the country. Yeah. It's uh, selling out the country's assets. Mm -hmm. And while they're doing that, they're trying to pretend you're telling people about you are the problem that the country has. Yeah. You know, you mm -hmm. causing houses not to be built because you not paying your bill. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You, 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 your children failing. See, mm -hmm. because parents have fallen down on the job, crime is high in the country because parents have dropped their responsibility. Yeah. All that kind of nonsense talk. As mm -hmm. though the government has no role to play in any of those things. Crime mm -hmm. out of control is parents' fault. Yeah. But when he was in a position mm -hmm. and crime was bad, it was the government's fault. Eh? Yes. yes. It was the government's fault. Now yeah. he in charge. It's mm. parents' fault. They got it. Eh? Yeah. Let it take that kind of old talk and meaningless nothing, mm. and and go and peddle that to people who are willing to give them a yes. Yeah. Not me. This country has been has been dealt a terrible hand, and mm. it is coming to life. Yeah. It's coming to life. You seen it? Every mm. single thing the, done by you. That that pitch lake. Yeah. That, that, that company going to. They, they, they know what they intend to do with that. Exactly. They hear all the talks around the refinery collapsing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's not yeah. going well. All mm -hmm. that is just to keep drawing it out. So the monopoly yeah. now that, that supplying us with gas will continue to be the monopoly. Yes. So whoever making all that amount of millions, hundreds of it, mm -hmm. right, will continue to do so. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the kind of governance that you believe is the correct governance for us as a people in Trinidad and today. Mm -hmm. and some people don't want to believe. Yeah. You know, they're trying, they're doing the best. Medical care in this country is down to the floor. Yes. If you go to, 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 to the healthcare sector, they mm -hmm. will tell you, I was talking to a nurse the other day, 
And she said, them doctors will just look at some people now and say, forget he, take a tackle later on. Now he go just now. Yeah. And, and people who you could spend some time with and help to, to administer proper care to. Sometimes they just come, they look at the patient from a distance and say, nah, 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 forget that now. Nah. Who is this one? You understand that? Yeah. Who's the file on this one? And they just leave them, you know? Yeah. Just leave them. So where we reach in this country today is like when you go into the hospital, the probability is quite high that mm. you're heading to a place to fall into everlasting sleep. Yeah. And, and, and that is the, what has happened to help the health sector? What has happened to, to help the, 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 the education the, the youngsters, they see people, which is what they're now doing. What was put in place hmm. uh, 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 to help those children from uh, not producing what was actually produced, which hmm. was disappointing. But yeah. it's not the parents or the children's fault alone. The government failed them. And you have to be honest and fair to say so. The government failed them. Hmm. And, and one could easily do a simplistic dissertation to accentuate or highlight the shortcomings of the government and demonstrate causation between the shortcomings of the government and the impact it had on those students. And I can do that. That is not a challenge. Hmm. It's very easy. It's very easy. And they, But he wants to talk to people in this country, as I'm not just making the point, hmm. you know, in this contemptuous way, hmm. as though, and when he talks like, I think it's for two reasons, you know, one is to deflect, because I don't believe he had the answers to the solution. I'm convinced of that. Hmm. So he don't want to deal with what's the true solution. So it's easier to point fingers. Yeah. And the second thing is to, to posture that way, to signal to people, don't ask me nothing, eh? because hmm. you see, I, you're not in a good mood. So hmm. wherever you, you get one and say, you look for it. Eh? Yeah. You understand? It's yeah. so you come to scare people. Come on. He's nobody to scare anybody. That's it right. comes down to intellectualism and having the answers to solve the problems of the country. And if you cannot intellectually solve the problems of this country, you are not the person for the job. You're the wrong person for the job. And after seven years, and you have driven so many people into absolute impoverishment, clearly we don't need any other yardstick to decide that you're the wrong person for the job. You have led the country poorly. You have led the country in a way that has driven the country backwards by 20, 30 years. But in our party, there are other people in there who could make a difference. And I'm calling on people within our party who is in parliament now to put your hand up and say, I want to lead. Put mm. your hand up and say, I want to lead. Yeah. Because as Karen said, the PNM is the best party for this country. And I support that. The PNM is the way of the future in this country. But the PNM has absolutely incorrect leadership at this time. You mm. can't tell me you're seven years uh, to help turn this thing around and after seven years a party that only got five every time you take the platform you come back after seven years to tell me you talk in section 34 now over nine ten years yeah right you come back to tell me nine ten years later about section 34 what happened in the last seven years hmm. where did you are the person presiding over the most amount of money under any prime minister ever i don't repeat that no other prime minister has had the kind of money to spend in this country like what you have had and you had nothing to show for it. Hmm. And you want people to continue to listen. I said to this prime minister, I said to this prime minister, I like you, you're a decent person, you're a family person. I do believe you're trying your best and perhaps you have, you have poured the best you have out of your system into the country. The truth is your management style is not relevant for this country. The truth is your approach to leading the country is maybe a good approach too, just as your management style may be a good one too, but they are not relevant for the time that we are in in the world today and therefore they are not relevant to lead the country through this new world era you ha it, it's time for new blood yes. your approaches were relevant for the late 80s and mid 90s hmm. right perhaps you could stretch it to the early 2000s but yes. certainly not 2022 not 2022 hmm. you competing with Farley. imagine Farley and 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 what's his name duke yeah. Completely humiliated you, and you're from the same island, and you sit as prime minister today. They completely humiliated you. Hmm. You know, kind of impact and embarrassment that is on our party. I mean, people had to stand up and, and, and put their hand up and say, hey, hey, we had to fix this. And if others are afraid to do it, there's nothing to be afraid of. I am putting my hand up and saying, it's time for us to do something differently. Where else in the world you can hear two completely newcomers to the political arena come and almost drove us into, into oblivion? Hmm. 
with a six month old party. Yeah. And the, the leader of the party, our leader was telling the whole of Tobago and all around the world that imagine, you see, he is chief secretary. That we say that. Yeah. And he gone in the, 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 the THA. And then they see him coming back out with handcuffs behind his back. You remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The people heard all of that yes. for days. And after they heard all of it, yeah. after they heard all of it, you know the people in Tobago decided? Hmm. All that you have told us about Mr. Duke, whatever you felt about him, we believe he's a better option than you. Yes. And you still want to lead us? Come on. Get serious. I am. And we can do better. We have dynamic people. Look, one is right here and she's beautiful. <laughs> I, say, I say, well, wait now. Yeah. Like, I thought I came back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, Karen, media time is expensive. You know, we can't just sit here with daddy. Eh? So I yeah, have to uh, keep this stage yeah, but, alive uh, what, what until you return. No, what, you, what is your point, though? Because it sounds like an interesting point. You're talking about leadership. I think. Yeah, who could, leadership. Who, I'm yeah. saying. This prime minister has spent virtually more money than any other prime minister in terms of all the collective budgets when you take the aggregate, right? He's the only prime minister has presided, as far as I can recall, a sitting on an oil price that got to one thirties. You understand? We, we we are now producing, I'm told, over 65,000 barrels a day. So anyhow you swing it, Richard Quest is right. This country has been benefiting from a windfall of money. And after seven years, there's nothing meaningfully to show for it. Where the money gone? You have not done much at all for the country. But as you have said, Karen, all you get is this contemptuous expression to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Instead, I come to tell us, listen, we got this windfall. This is what we did. This is how the, 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 the poor and ordinary man is going to progress. Just like what Mr. Manning did. He said when Mr. Pandey had said, when you come and talk dollar for dollar, what about those who don't have a dollar? Mr. Manning said, no, 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 no. I have to look out for those who don't have a dollar. So the, and he came up with gate complete government assisted tertiary education program and so many of us benefited from it me too i did one of the degrees i was fully funded by gate thanks to the great late patrick manning oh my dear me may the lord continue to bless him and may he rest in peace he has helped the human resource of this country to move forward he has empowered a lot of us today to be able to say what we are seeing in this country today is not good it's not good and a lot but it doesn't come from caring, you see. You it know? doesn't it's come, not, from, it come from caring. And that's it, what the PNM had built its reputation on about caring for the um the the lowly persons who were, had the ambition but did not have the opportunity. And um yeah. he has not done that for them. I one thing I will commend though, and it would be his son. Now, people might say I, I shouldn't say his son, but I am going to say son because. Um, Brian Manning with the Trini Mine. I was going to write an article on it. In fact, I was about on an, another show because I was doing the research on it and finding out how much um, natural gas, maybe I did mention it on this show, how much natural gas you need to power to make one Bitcoin. You don't have enough natural gas. That was about three months ago. We don't have enough natural gas to fulfill our current obligations even with the price high prices, but you're going to open up a Trini mine, which is the D right has no regulation, is known for money laundering, is known for terrorist funding, is known for anonymity, is known for all the negative things associated with, with with the kind of currency that certainly um you don't want to be associated with. And more at, at that point, using up our natural gas resources we did not. Mm -hmm. And we had the Minister of Trade more or less in, she did not endorse it, but seemed to be saying what a wonderful thing. And I was astounded, but I was so pleased to hear Brian Manning couldn't have said more about what is wrong with that than I could have said. And that's the end of Trini Mine. I mean, no own Trini Mine. We could, you try and guess. You go yeah. and guess, but it was out there. They told you own Trini Mine. Yeah. Yeah. And he said why we couldn't be all the reasons that were obvious. This is what I'm talking about. In other words, for some reason, I'm and I'm so proud. I I just feel that um, I, I'm maybe I'm giving too little credit to the prime minister, but that's I'm judging him on his past, and I'm giving Brian Manning a lot of credit because of who his father was and what his father was. Not that he is a clone of his father, but certainly when I saw that Trinity Mine thing, 
he get, he the way he dealt with that issue, he left it in no doubt that they couldn't come back with that idea. Because he's speaking as a minister and a minister of finance and told every reason why the cryptocurrency and Bitcoin was a bad thing. And he didn't even deal with the natural gas point. I can't remember him dealing with the natural gas point. But he let you know his money laundering, drugs, terrorist financing, anonymity. He said all the things, deregulation, not passing through any central bank. He said all the reasons why you don't want it. And, and it seemed as though our Minister of Trade was on the same front page in The Guardian under the Trinimine picture, Trinimine coming to Trinidad, how much billions Trinidad can make from it, seemed to have been endorsing it. But I was very pleased to read what he had to say because you see that idea, it get completely and totally shut down. And that is the kind of thing that I can't take, which I never, ever have seen the light of day. It should have never ever be in a consideration in this country. But how organized is the cabinet for one minister to be allowing her image to come across as endorsing this thing while another minister is writing um, comprehensively about why it's it's not a good okay, thing? So I, okay, so I'm going to just guess because, and I'm guessing because I don't have any inside information, but it may very well be that because when uh, the minister Manning spoke out it wasn't right away because it was on the front page in a little corner you know promoting first of all bringing cryptocurrency to trinidad now that, that was the first thing for, for a few months and then was this idea of trinity mine company and then underneath the picture of them three or four jacket and suit um persons was a picture of the minister of trade and i i I would not want to say that she came out and said she does, but it certainly gave the impression, a favorable impression to it. And and in fact, they did a write-up on Trini Mine about, and um, that is the Guardian, about all the positives of it. So I suspect, to answer your question, there might have been some little infight, some argument going on. And I feel that um, he would have had to have support from others. And he, and they knew that they had to shut down that idea. It, yeah. it, it, you know, there are a lot of, of things that would have come to the cabinet when I was there that got, got shut down. Eh? Okay, yeah. so it, things do get shut down. And um, and I maybe got, maybe behind the scenes, a lot of, you know, things was going on and saying that we can't have this Trini mine in the country and we can't have it. Maybe it was going on for weeks until eventually he got the green light. And he and he didn't mince words. I, I was very surprised at how um, direct he was about the we, the the um, negatives of it. The, so strong was he in what he said that they can't come back with it. Not now, not ever. <laughs> Take that to Mind Limited and go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. Not to Nevada. Sometimes the two things that play there. Some people may have made a lot of money off of bitcoins may or may not be associated with the government, but they may not have been known to have money before government. So some people are trying to sell the idea to peddle that Bitcoin thing that, you know, it can give you millions to make people feel should they be out of office anytime and you see them enjoying a certain lifestyle, the country's aware that they made a lot of money through Bitcoins. I want to say to them today, come better than that. I will not view you as such. I will not be one of them. Right, I but, but it was know. just um, I mean, the whole thing of bitcoins is not only is in, in in its infancy, and so on, but there's so much negativity uh, um associated with it, and in a small economy like ours, and so on, that it just was a crazy idea, and I just couldn't see how you writing you I'm rewriting us reading a set of articles saying that when the minister of finance saying how much revenue you're going to be for Trinidad based on the price of oil and gas, it never materializing, not because the price, not, but sometimes the prices are off, off, but most of the time it's because the production level is never right. And it's always much less than he ever says it is. So I was, I believe, I don't know how they, how he, um, how it, it, it came about. I do not know, I haven't spoke to anybody, but I was very pleased because I was going to write an article on it very pleased to see the strong position and the reasoning why it's a no-go. And with that, 
nobody could come back now if the minister and the ministry of has told you why we shouldn't do it. So you see that through the mind limited um, thing? Go to another country and go and do that, but don't do it in Trinidad. And I take, I'm giving Mr. Manning of some of the credit for that. I don't know, I cannot say, but he spoke out with such passion on it that I know that he was not just reading from a script. Karen, you have been one of the better ministers of finance we have had in this country in the past. So you will know, normally things are budgeted for Ministry of Housing, Agriculture, all these things, right? And it's the allocation from the budget that they receive will determine how much you would spend for the year. Am I correct? Yes, but I mean, um, yes. Okay, I would say yes. I'll answer yes, simply yes. I'll right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here you had the Prime Minister, I think it was also saying or endorsing that people are not building, no people are not paying uh, for the houses and paying the rent, and that is preventing the government from building houses now. So what is the takeaway from that? Is it that the government cannot award contracts? That's what was being communicated. Um, until people pay the money, and who have contracts cannot be paid until people pay them, their, their, their mortgage or they pay off for the house or so on. Is that how it works in Trinidad? Or that the Ministry of, of Housing would receive its allocation and that will shift across, I believe, to the Housing Development Corporation and they will manage that money from there to deal with contracts and therefore contractors and they would bill and whatever revenue they pick up from housing this year could be sent to the treasury to be part of the budget next year to determine what the allocation for next year would be. Isn't that how it works? Um, first of all, I never worked in housing, so, uh, but I will say this, housing is part of our social welfare program, as it is in many, many countries all over the world. I mean, United States, Europe. I mean, in fact, countries that don't have a social program to provide um, cheap housing for people who are in a lower income. Um, that's certainly not a country that is so high on the Human Development Index. So I don't think ever in the case of the uh, housing program is it ever intended to be make any profits. It is not intended. It's subsidized. It's, in, in fact, there's a lot of subsidizing that goes on because when the contractor gives his price, I mean, he probably can't make anything off of it. So I think that the government has to put in the difference but I think it works on the premise. It works on the premise that, like, you've gotten a more, you've gotten your owner, you have a mortgage, you've got a mortgage, a very good level mortgage, and over time, as you pay back, like any bank, you're paid back. It will eventually pay off itself. But it was never intended, um, in my understanding, to be a mechanism for the government to make any money of. In fact. The government was subsidizing it. So what, what the problem is, the problem is the level of um, default. And the level of default is extraordinarily high. And the problem with the level of default is extraordinarily high. It's among the very same persons who are at the lower spectrum of the um, income level, who have lost their job because of COVID-19, who are out of work because of this um, failure to develop the economy. So it's a never ending problem, but it is not a sector or a division or allocation of budgeting in the budget, national budget, that is based on any profit. It's like healthcare, education, national security, you don't expect, but tourism, agriculture, energy those are the re those are the areas where the government can make money apart from the taxes that we pay as citizens so i know i don't look at it's not like that and and also to um why you know this whole thing about budget is not so what should i say so obtuse or so com 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 complex because every year you have to go back to the parliament to get the by the end of october i believe and as you get, I think you get an extension but i think it, it, the extension goes up to the end of october but in order to get the budget for the next 
fiscal year, you have got to present your budget to the parliament and get it voted and so on. And if you can't do that, you get up to a certain point. And after that, you can't run the country because you don't have access to funding. So the point I'm making is that when a government goes in 2000 for a highway that is going to cost $2 billion, you can't expect that the highway is going to be built by the next year and they're going to come back and tell you they built the highway. But you do expect them to tell you where they have reached and it should be a good point part based on what they said. And, and so on. So budget is a way of giving an, um, an account to the country and getting your allocation. And when it comes to housing, it's not based on any profit as you pay any rent and not having the level of default that we clearly have. No, what, what I was touching on, uh, Karen, was it had nothing to do with profit, eh? in that we know the government is not doing it for profit. The government is subsidizing the houses so that the, the, the people who get houses here, as soon as they get government house, they can almost say, when they move, what it is, the, 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 the more it, the, this, that the place will move, the moratorium Mor over it. As soon mm -hmm. as that is removed from it, you could say make $500,000 in equity on your home because the government subsidized it. That is, but that's what I'm talking about. And if that is the truth, surely the government couldn't be in a far profit. The part I'm yeah. dealing with is the statement that was made that they cannot give contracts to contractors until people pay for pay what the, the government what they're owing for houses already given out, which conveyed the impression that um, the current contractors who are waiting on money from the state today, they cannot be paid until they collect money tomorrow from people who owe in so that they'll have it to give. That's the part I was saying. No, well, okay, so from a legal point of view, your car is an absolutely not a uh, thing. That's not, that has nothing to do with the person who borrowed the money, who is the person living in the house, and from whom he borrowed the money, which is with um, TTMF through the HGC, um, uh, HGC purchase of HGC, HGC house. He contract a bill, a bill in it, and he charged you X, Y, and Z. He has nothing to do with your problems with the buyer. You know. He built a house and you pose a pain 300000 if that's the contract you entered into. That is it. Why, why are you saying that? Why are you saying that? Why are you saying that? It's because you want to look in for excuse, I suppose, to not pay any contractors. Yes. Okay, it's not my that's fault. I wanted you to say because you are finance minister and I wanted you to say that. I don't want to say that. How it works. You want no, to say how it it's not my fault. For me, Karen, I wanted you to say it. I said it last oh, week. Okay, but I say it now. And you are saying it now. Okay, so it's not my fault, but I thought that was a given. He's right because he says that with everything. He says the country is violent. Um, um, it never sees such a violent country. This country is a, 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 a violent. He just got up. He, 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 he just never got responsible. up. He just never no, responsible. No, he didn't know that before. He didn't know that before. He just yeah. got up. But it had nothing yeah. to do with him. He it had nothing to do with him. Everything yeah. has nothing to do with him. Anything bad has nothing to do with him. It has something to do with somebody else, and that, but not me. So that is consistent with him. You know, I just say, you know, I want to pay you, you know. But you see these bad people who vote for me uh, religiously. Yeah, but yeah, they're bad now. They're bad but now. you know what? But you know what? You know what? I'm uh, listen. I want them not to be misunderstood. I don't want to be misunderstood because I am not at all endorsing it. But you see, they have been. They say you ain't giving me anything. I can't get anything from you. The only thing I get is a house. I work for that house because I'm. Uh, I walk and walk about with you. I take the thing and I, um, um, preach the gospel according to the PNM. I come and carry story on A, B, and C so you didn't know about. I come and give you a, a, a thing. So I, I went in the community. I turn around people to come to, for a party group. I work for that. So you see, if I'm not paying it, what do you want me to do? You, you have a job for me? If you have a job for me, I'll go in. But you just tell me that CPEP I can only get four hours in a day. And you know, and a month. So how I suppose able to pay it? Where I get any money from, boss man? You know, us who living in these houses are persons who are very who living from paycheck to paycheck, sometimes from day to day. You know that already. That's why we got the house. That's why we qualify for the house because we fall into the category of people in need. So am I to manufacture that money? 
when the economy which you have not developed created no new opportunities, no new jobs, no opportunities. Where am I to get that money from? So you're telling your contractors that to take the heat and turn it on the um, AC. But you see the agency owners, I think one thing about them, they might feel, and it's not right, eh? I'm not endorsing it, but I feel a sense of entitlement to, to not pay some of them. Some of them. No, no, no. I get that. Some may be like that for true. But the, the, my, my thing is that why would you want to tell the country that you can't give small contractors contracts because you're waiting on people to pay to get money from them before you award a contract? And those who are contract already are not getting paid because they're still waiting on money from those who own in their homes uh, to collect it from them so to enable me to pay you. Yeah, so, so what he's saying, it's saying, it's not, it's not my fault. I'm not to blame. Yes. Do not point the finger at me. Those people who started school at the Angels has left school. <laughs> no <laughs> to those people. Those are the people. Yes, yes. But you are not the saying that. The he's saying, Karen, to those people, the problems that the country belong to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, he's yeah. saying. You are responsible for those problems. Don't ask me that thing. Exactly. Don't come to me. I exactly. can't help you. But when you want votes, you all are the people you know. Eh? I just tell all everything. I am working for you all, and I'm pleased to report. Pleased to report what? Tell us what you have done with the almost half a trillion dollars. I mean, the people have to open their eyes and realize, listen, this is a strange kind of wickedness that is being played out on the people of the country today. It's a very, it's a rare, it's a unique type of wickedness. I have to say it has some skill in it. It has some, some, some talent attached there to be able to keep people so locked in to such a terrible situation for so long without them being able to come to the realization that they are being played, they are being worked. They're being worked by the leadership of the country. Started. I think that's ah. I, I, no, do, I do, I do yeah. think people are waking up and smelling the coffee. I think, not, and I hope it's local coffee, though, but the, they're smelling coffee. I think they are, though, because I think they're recognizing, okay, COVID-19 affected uh, partly, well, up to 29, they had, okay, when they, the first year they came in, it, it, um, they could say, which is not what they are having to do, they, they price of oil and gas had collapsed and then they had to pay public servants and all that good stuff right so they had that um that one year of grace and then but, but between 2016 and 2019 there's no excuse at all and then 2020 2021 gave them out thing because all over the world was COVID-19 and everything was you know so 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 things were really bad and people were closing now especially small businessman the micro businessman he just couldn't sustain his business simply could not sustain his, his business. People have lost their jobs. So I think people were willing to so caught up with that. And he wanted you to be caught up with that because as long as you're caught up with that, it means that you're not studying, uh, well, what is he going to do when we come out of this? Because we're going to come out. Because Biden had a plan. Biden had a plan. And Biden plan is not a bad plan because he said, I think yesterday, um, last week, they said the highest level of employment that, ever had is since 20 from going back to 2040 was that last week right so yes yes, yes. so so yes he is dealing with um with inflation but that's because of the demand people wanted to spend want to go out that money to spend and they want to go out and spend money we don't have that so i think now that the 2020 thing has um settled down and people are now starting to say but wait a minute now what um oil and gas are going through the roof since the glass quarter of 2021 and it seems that it's not going to change in a hurry what is happening to us and that is why i keep saying that what they should be doing is focusing on not just talking about another program another pro project i think somebody wrote an article as i'm saying that about one that uh, mr welch wrote when he was the head of the economic advisory board and I think mm -hmm. he gave some specific recommendations in specific areas. And he, and he wasn't getting any response from the Minister of Finance. So he sent it to the Prime Minister again and again and again. I think he sent it um, about 
I think he, what of it was, by the time he signed to the prime minister, he was so frustrated, he signed to the prime minister. And according to the article, he didn't even get an acknowledgement or a thank you. You know, are you supposed to have conflict, um, any um, confidence in these people? When they tell you, they, uh, uh, the um, the Anthony Watkins project, they're doing it. Well, what they're doing, well, let us find out now. Oh my God, listen, let me tell you, that is why Boris Johnson lost his job, eh? Right? And that's why Mia yeah. Motley has her job. Mia Motley has her job because as hard as things are in Jimmy, in Barbados, as yeah. hard as things are in Barbados, the people believe in her and they trust her. And you know why they trust her? You know why Boris Johnson lost his job? A lot of people supported the Brexit. A lot of people yeah. said he handled yeah. COVID-19 because they don't trust him. Just remember. I want to tell you, there are people in this country who would more easily trust Boris than the leadership we have in this country today. And yet still Boris wasn't good enough for the... For well, the at least British he was charismatic. <laughs> yeah. Was you you the last point he made? Was you that? You that was the best job that he was given up? No, no, no. Okay. He said he really is something. He's a character in truth, you know. He said, hasta la vista. Oh, yes, yes, yes. He said that. And the, and the, the people who carry the story said, he forget to say, baby. Or, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll be yeah, back. yeah. Yeah, still at least the baby. Yeah, and I'll be back. References. That's, but that's what I mean. I still have to be stuck. It's yes, exactly yeah. that. Uh, it's right. not over. Right. It's not over. <laughs> at least, at least, at least he, have, he has charisma. Okay, but that's not the yes, point. The point yes. we're really making is. That the, um, and he said that in the House of Commons, eh? Eh? Huh? You didn't <laughs> he say that in the House of Commons, yeah. But you heard the House of Commons. You didn't yeah. say that in the House of Commons. Oh, really I tell you. Oh we, are very, we are so polite in Trinidad and Tobago, the way we conduct ourselves in our parliament. And I'm you see how the pack up in there like sardine? Huh? You don't have yeah. your own seat and a desk and thing, you know? I'm telling you. They <laughs> you just sit in a chair with no hand rest. Everybody and just post, packed in. And the poor speaker, they had somebody send me a, a viral thing of the speaker very, very recently when two were talking and they just would not listen to him. And he's saying, shut up, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Is this Britain? Yeah. Is this yeah like it when so speaker, before the speaker, there was a collision and he said um, he was defending Boris, I think. And uh -huh. he was saying... Um, you have had your say. You have had your say, Mr. Op Mr. Opposition Leader. You have had your say. The Prime Minister must speak and the Prime Minister will speak. Mr. Prime Minister, speak. And there we go. That's how they do that. That's there. Nice action. Nice huh? real action. No, I said nice yeah, real action. Yeah, yeah. I so, right. But the point we are coming back to for your read listeners yeah. is really a question of trust and confidence in the leadership. And that is what has broken down over time. For example, most recently, um, with this um, Standard & Poor's announcement that they have um, raised the rating of the Trans Petroleum Holdings Limited to, I think, from BB to BB mine, which is just above junk status and from negative to stable. But it is... Uh, it is because of heritage, and it is because of heritage, because heritage is production arm of, of, the, of the Trump Petroleum Holdings Limited, and it is because of the price of oil and gas going through the roof. So, yes, you're supposed to, um, so, and the outlook, based on everything you read now, because of geopolitical uncertainty still with Putin, and then Germany Bell um, going back into burning a lot of coal and all the all the oil things over which we are have no control over, but it's a geopolitical and it it seems like the fight changes from day to day because that's what they've said. They've said that this the, the volatility we are experiencing now is from the 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 uncertainty in the geopolitical um 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 what's happening geopolitically as well as 
the continuation and strains of COVID-19 that persist not to deadly, but affecting the, and of course the supply chain management issue and so on. So my point being that the Minister of Finance said, everything's wonderful. We are back to investment. We are far from that. We're just below um, junk bond status. And the reason why they raised it is because heritage, because of heritage. They said it was because of heritage. They said it was heritage. And it's because of the money that heritage is making, not because of heritage, because of the price of oil and gas. So that's good for us. But don't go there patting yourself on the back as if you have done something to create this. If the price of oil and gas was depressed, guess where we would be? We'd probably be in Jungbo. And because I'll tell you why we could be in Jungbo. Because just prior to that, the reason why they had them on a credit watch wasn't because of the price of oil and gas in heritage. It's because they had failed to file their, um, their, their audit report within a time frame and other critical information that had a very tight time frame and they had yet to file it. So that was not the price of oil or gas. That was an administrative issue that caused us to have standard and pause, have us on a, um, um, on just above the, the, um, junk status. And so can you imagine if we still had that problem and oil and price, gas prices were still depressed? Could you imagine where we would be today? And then to pat yourself on the back, because I went and read it up. I went and saw why Standard and Poor's, um, when they moved it in July, from July to um, to stable and so on, and and why they did it and and why moved from 2021. And I said, in between that period, one of the reasons that they hadn't still left it there was they couldn't, had not filed their 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 um their audited report and they had not certain things they had not complied with. I mean, you're proud of yourself? Huh? You're proud of yourself? You need, is it gas or not? And by the way, I went and looked it up to make sure. I went and looked at the central bank's um, monetary report. No, it was for June or May, May. And he was, and in the report, they said that the increase in price, um, because of exports have increased substantially, I mean, making far over a billion US more from the oil and gas. But you also said that the import costs have gone up by 20%. And most of that is a result, 85% of that is a result of, you know, that same TPHL that they crap in their hands over? It's yes. because Paria, Paria, is importing and using up our US dollars to the tune of 357 million US dollars in order to import fuel. So with one hand you get the thing, and the other hand you take away. But because the outlook for oil and gas is still very strong, at least uh, in going into 2023, that's why they didn't, um, um, that's why they push it up a notch, right? But um, Paria, I decided now, why don't they talk about Paria costing us three, over a billion? I can't do any maths. How much is 357 million US? Uh, about $2 billion we paying to yeah. import fuel. And that's part of the TPT, that's part of the General Petroleum Holdings Limited. And we know Guaracara Park closed down. In, but we don't know who we're importing the fuel from. Who is the supplier? That's true. I don't know if that's a secret or we have freedom of information. I guess we could ask. And you heard that the Prime Minister came out now and said, on the papers I read it, where, in other words, the talks <laughs> are not going well with the new person they had um, for the refinery. You saw that, right? Well, it's not the... They, they gave up the other one? They gave up the uh, um, the something 10, that one that's looked like if... A they ten give it up. Well, you, in other words, you talk not heading, the talk's not heading in the direction in which the government was hoping for it. Uh, but you know so why? The, Karen, could they, you go on first. You go on first. No, no, you go first. I dominate. Right, right, right. Karen, do you believe they really, they could really reopen that refinery? Because if that refinery is reopened, it will compete with who is supplying us right now with gas. So it's just talk around reopening the refinery, but with no real or clear intention to do so. I, I will disagree with you on this way. 
And this, yeah. I hope Private Ramna Ryan won't mind me calling his name because he did say it in a, on 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 his other shoes. So it's not um you know it's it was said publicly. What he said, and I I and I I, I accept what you're saying. The refinery is a huge refinery. It's been around since I don't know, 70s, 70s. He says, so there are huge parts of the refinery that are really rusted, falling apart, and so on, and, and so on. But all the um, attempts to gas to liquid, to create the diesel, the one with um, uh, Mr. Manningstein, um, you know, with the, and then uh, all the projects, and then you had this last one. Where the whole thing blew up, but they're coming back at the end of the year. Um, what's the? Uh, is that one's a local effort? But the point I'm making is this: the location of all of those projects to create diesel and to decarbonize the um um the the gas or lower the gas um the carbon content even of our heavy um oil and oil from Venezuela is on that same. Um, refinery site on buildings, some of which were deemed to be structurally sound, but technically unfit for purpose. So what I am saying is as the world is definitely moving towards decarbonization, especially what's happening with Germany. I mean, Germany is in so shame that they have to be burning coal. Of all things, they have to be burning coal. And now what they're trying to do is stock up on the natural gas and then the whole thing of getting uh, natural gas through LNG rather through the pipeline. So Europe is not sitting by to be held to ransom by Russia. So my, um, they're not going to sit down there. So I am saying you don't have to do the, the whole refinery, but in those parts of the refinery where both administrations, the UNC and PNM administration, and that um, company, I can't, gosh, I can't remember the name of it, but you know they had an accident and they had to shut it down. Um, all of them were using the same infrastructure. And, and I think Kevin Ramnarine says to me, if I am not mistaken, or he said it on the show, he said, oftentimes when they show you the refinery, they show you the part of the refinery that broke down. But there are parts of the refinery that were built fairly recently with that um, ultra diesel thing, the, uh, the, but it is the technical technology that they, that has is um, is challenging them. So to answer your question, to be importing two billion dollars worth of gas when you could only even if you could just supply it for your own self. That is the point I'm dollars. making. Yeah. Right, but not only that, you can export it because. You heard, you know what they said, the geopolitical uncertainty. That's the term they use. What, and that's a very critical thing. Before, when they, well, when you look at the price of oil and gas, I mean, the day that um, oil and gas prices collapse, there are a lot of countries that will go into stark poverty because all they are is made of sand and have that coal, that oil under the underground. So there is no way that those countries are not going to try to ensure that they create a form of fuel that meets some green energy um, requirements, even well, if it yeah. is not for Europe, certainly for Asia. So I don't see it closed. I see, well, I see that it, they could be reopened, but limited reopening and to deal with what they kept trying to do was to decarbonize, decarbonize and create diesel. Yeah, and that would be very helpful to the people of this country, especially as it relates to contributing to putting a hold on the escalating inflationary pressure on the system through transportation that has driven upwards as a result of the increase in uh, fuel. That the input of fuel has, yeah. But not only that, because um, Russia has used the pipeline as a excuse, so as Germany says, for not supplying Germany with the requirements of natural gas, because they say something to do with 
Montreal and they have the parts and they won't send it, or whatever the argument is. The point is now LNG is becoming very important because now you're carrying it by boat. So you don't have to rely on a pipeline. But if you're carrying it by boat, those are specially built boats and you have to have specially built platforms. So what I am saying, in addition, we are seeing, and that's part of the geopolitical fight that's going on to have less and less reliance on another country. So what right. I am saying is it's not only for our purposes that we won't be spending all that money on importing fuel, but because we already have trained two, three, and four up, and we are very well knowledgeable on LNG, there is an opportunity to focus the, the energy sector in Trinidad on that aspect. I, I don't, I'm not an energy person. I don't know what conversations are going on, but that to me would seem to make sense. Yeah. Um, of course, it would seem to make sense. And it, it's it's easy. And my point is, it, 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 it seems to make sense easily to you and to me and to many other reasonable people. Why isn't it making sense to the government when you could solve so many different types of problems? And, and the biggest one being contributing meaningfully to driving inflation downwards by opening up the refinery to do what it could in relation to the diesel and perhaps the part that would deal with super, if you could get to that. Why, why okay. would you try to back up those aspects of it, at least for local okay. production only or okay. local refining only? Okay, so what I would say with this, I think we had this conversation um, before. Really and truly, our inflation, headline inflation, which is the basket of goods, of transport, housing, food, and all of that. And on year on year, if the cost of those same items go up, and by what percent? So, is you, so you're making the same salary, but you're paying more for those basic items which you need, which is food, transportation, and, um, and housing. Our headline inflation is very low. It is low because there's low, and that's what the Central Bank has has reported, low consumer confidence. What pushes up inflation, as we spoke about already, and makes it, which is what's happening in America, is demand pull. When too much money choice in too few goods. In other words, COVID-19 over, oh God, I could go to restaurants, I could go um, to this hotel, I could go with Bahamas, I could go, they, oh God, I'd free up, I'd free up, I'd go here, and people are spending unlocked money. Another way to express that is, is, is that the demand for goods simply outweigh suppliers' right. ability so, to supply. Which is, which is generally saying yeah. that your economy is going at a fast pace. And, the, and, yeah. and, and you're like, now we don't have demand pull, we have cost push. And cost yeah. push is the consumers, are, and they said it, the consumer, why, why is the banks are getting loans from private sector, public private sector, or whatever, from the thing. Consumers are not borrowing because they don't have the confidence. They don't know what's going to happen with oil and, and gas. So what I am saying is the issue that is really um, to deal with our inflation is to create these opportunities of people to be self-employed um, as entre little entrepreneurs, making a little money, paying the taxes if they're making enough money, but also in the agro and agricultural industry to, so that we then reduce that 80% import of food that we are spending in foreign exchange. That is what mash up Sri Lanka, that's what mash up Lebanon, this is what mashes up countries, you know when they can't pay for fuel and for food. So what the government should be doing is while they pursue that thing as a source of revenue, they should see that the weakness that COVID-19 and all this Russia-Ukraine thing has brought out to the world is how, and what and Venezuela, is how um, vulnerable countries are. And what they should be doing is pushing the agro-industry, agricultural, industry as not no little 
um, thing that you give people, um, you know, really as an industry and not to the big boys either because the big boys can bring out 20 acres of land and put up a hydro farm thing and they can't compete with them. So we're not talking about that, right? And develop an agro-industry together with, the, as I've said it before, that is what is needed because what we are seeing is low inflation, but it's because of low demand, because of low consumer confidence. So that's not good. But when you take out from the, what they call the core inflation, they take all the food inflation out of that low number, will be number might be three point something percent or five, maybe it's reached 5% now, I can't remember. But when you take out the food component out of that whole number, the food inflation alone is going nearly 8%. So what is, so really our inflation is low because there's low demand, because nothing going on in the economy, we're not growing our own food and it's food inflation. Thing. So they should be, what they should be focusing on in a real way is agriculture, agro-industry for export, while they continue to look for ways that Guarakara Park is not end up a set of rusted um, steel. Very well uh, said, Karen. Try not to because we, we approach. No, 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 you can't. <laughs> Karen, come on. Uh, we, we're moving forward. Eh? Um, but wonderfully expressed. You, you, yeah. The teacher in you came out there, and I, I'm certain our listeners, again, would have benefited hugely. Yeah. Uh, That's from... what I wanted to understand. That because the inflation rate is low, is not a good thing. But if you pull out the, um, the, the food inflation out of the co-inflation and see it as 8%, that's a bad thing. America, yeah. the inflation rate is 7%, but they could afford, but that's on Biden problem now. But you know what they do? It's things so bad here that the central bank, usually trying to control money supply and how much money circulating, will have an interest. We've said that already. He's kept it because they want people to vote. People are not borrowing because people do not And have I just shifted into plugging my laptop. I just shifted huh? the plug in my laptop. I'm not interrupting you. I just shifted into plug in my laptop. So don't but, say I walk out on you. No, but I just um, shifted. Yeah. Richard, I want to just have uh, spoken a little bit about the eat of food, you know. The, the family did not. No, I'm coming. I just want to plug in the laptop. Don't look how I look at the time. Yeah, we have eight minutes to go again. How long it will take, man? But don't let me interrupt you. I, how long do you think I take to say what I want to say about the eat of food? Okay, okay, you go on. I wouldn't move. Go on. <laughs> I just didn't want to try to cut off. But go on. I think it may take us. They said I had 12 minutes. Okay, well, let's eat the food. I mean, yeah. the truth of the matter is uh, that she's not wrong. And they know she's not wrong. Maybe she said it in a vulgar manner. But she said it already about people living in Lavender. They want to eat a food. And guess what? All those rich people want to eat a food. So it's a vulgar colloquialism, but it can apply across the board to everyone. So I'm glad that she now, be, now has applied it, not only to the poor, but she understands the wealthy want to eat a food. And she's right. And it yeah. is understandable that um, lawyers will not come out and vote whatever their viewers views are because most of the big contracts are government related the government in some shape or form is going to be a part to those big contracts construction whatever it is and if you get on the wrong side of whoever the government is not only if you the wrong side of whoever the government is your your firm is going to suffer and they are not going to get weak. And it's not just only affecting you, but your juniors, your staff, and so on. So oftentimes, persons may have a view and a very strong view, but they cannot express it because of the, cons the realities of the situation. And that will be a reality. Just like how you say they will might watch this show, they will get a report on who voted, whether it's by private voted or not. They'll hear who talk out how they, um, on who said what. So I, I do think, but it's true of her too. They did the same thing. So they, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. And that's why neither has, um, what do you call it? You know, that, that trust confidence thing. But I will say I gave her kudos for not wilting 
and taking the book and going in her corner and, and say, um, oh God, I'm sorry. She came back fighting and saying, you very well know it is. And she knows it because I know some of them who she's think, talking about. I know some of them and it disgusts you. But you know, when, I, I'm sorry if I use, you said it in that way, but it disgusts you. It, 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 it makes you become so... Um, what is the word that they you, you lose any sort of um it's not respect it really makes you think that this world is just all about power and money and when people come out and say all the wonderful sounding things they say it because they have an agenda it's not you know and that the law association is no different so she wasn't and and the law association jumping jump to take offense to that because I don't know whose name she called. I wasn't there and I didn't get any report. But I could imagine the names that she may have called. Okay? That's the one thing I want to say. And straight following on that, um, Martin Daly may not want to speak to me after this. But I admire him a lot. But I was very disappointed in him. When he wrote his article last week, I mean, Martin Daly, it, um, I like Reggie Barmore a lot too. Is a code of ethics. He couldn't come out of saying that he didn't tell the truth because they had the proof. It wasn't a document in Trinidad that they could lose. It was in Miami. He couldn't say he didn't say um, 2003 that he was a senior because he, there was proof. All the things he said were not true. They were simply not true. And he swore to it. He swore to it as if it were the truth. How could, he's not a normal lawyer. This is your attorney general. This is a person who is going to represent not only the interest of a cabinet, you have to understand an attorney general. That's why in England, I have told you, we've said it before, the attorney general is not in cabinet and is not a member, of, I think maybe a member of parliament, but is not in the cabinet. Because when they give their advice, it must be free from other considerations. And the attorney general, and for, and in my view, for Martin Daly to make light of it, I thought he made, oh, well, he apologized. So let's get on with it. And that's what it sounded like. So I wanted to say in the future for anybody who is, fa who is found wanting in a, in, and in a way that they cannot, the evidence is over, is over is they can't argue with the evidence, I will tell you what to do. Say that you're sorry. Say that you disappointed people. And thank them for giving opportunity to serve and to continue to serve. You do not have to resign. We don't, we, in England, they will do it. Even in England with all Boris Johnson behavior, he didn't, he didn't resign. I mean, he resigned. He understood he, that was the honorable thing to do. And for persons like Martin Daly, not to see and to make light of something so, so, um, so serious in your first few months, so serious. And then to say, well, at least he did more better than most of um, um, ministers. They never apologized. So that is a reason. So you will give that as a reason for saying that you, he shouldn't be, um, should stay there. That is the logic. I, I was very disappointed in Martin Daly uh, and what he had to say. Um, and that's someone I respect a lot because even to him, his logic must have um, <laughs> his own logic may have um, got the better of, got the better of him, and he read what he said. So, in in conclusion, I know Richard's going to come back, and I can leave the studio. Um, in conclusion, I think I like Reggie more very much. I think what he did was he made, what was already bad. He made it worse, and I think he should have done the honorable thing and resigned. And I think because it has become politicized, as, as everything in this country becomes political, a lot of people do not want to say or take a position. And we can understand that for all the reasons I said, but I was disappointed with that. So in the future, Richard, if you get in trouble, yeah, it catch you red-handed, eh? It catch you red-handed. Just say, I am sorry. Look, look the part, eh? I am sorry. And thank you. Yeah, yeah, that, and thank you for allowing me to continue to serve my country. And thank you. And if you do that, 
you have no more worries. Don't, don't worry. That's, that that you takes a place of resignation. Yeah. Let's say yes. he looks sad enough. He looks hurt. He looks hurt. Yes. He's mad at you. So from now yeah. on, any, any, any minister, especially the attorney general, get caught red-handed in something wrong. I am going to say, why is it okay for Reggie Amor as attorney general to say, I'm sorry and thank you for your support. And that was good enough. Yeah, yeah. End of story. Okay. And end of story. Yeah, uh, you know, I wanted us to touch, and you have spoken. Don't allow your friendship with anyone to make you interfere with your reputation. Your good name is all that any reason ever person has their good name. And don't allow um, anyone because they're in this political party or that political party, or they're close friends, especially we see they are caught, and then you coming out to try to what they are doing is trying to spin the ordinary man. They're trying to, and the spinning there is the deceptive act. They are letting down themselves by attempting to deceive persons who would normally look to them for guidance through their explanation about what is really taking place at this time. And instead of those persons step up to the plate and do the correct thing, they are stepping up to tell the people, I could outsmart you. Could you, you Martin, know, you, you know what, Martin, Daly, like, I know somebody's going to tell him I said that, but I would tell, it to tell him if I see yeah. him. I said, Martin Daly, how could you say, well, at least you apologize, and that's most, I, uh, that's better than all politicians, they never apologize. So that's that's your that's your standard of... So because he apologized, that needed... Standard. Standard. That, that's standard. That's standard. That is that's all he met. He fulfilled the requirement. Yes. So to stay on. Exactly. Yeah, that's it. You fulfill the requirement. That yes. The that's requirement what is just to say, I'm sorry. And look, and look sorry. contrite enough. And look contrite right. enough. Demonstrate it, that. Does it, but you know, we are lawyers. And lawyers know the power of precedent. Because yes. one day, Congo Day. Of course they do. One day, the shoe will be on another foot. And you'll say, but I am sorry. And that person would apologize. And you would hear and what they would have to say. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I will and I apologize. So why my apology not good enough? But that one I'm uh, why I'm not looking contrite enough. And by the way, yes. Reggie, after this will really probably not speak to me. But I've said to you, these are people who I am friends with, like them, and that shows hopefully Reg, my level. You have said them. nothing because you have not spoken about Reggie, you know. Absolutely you have spoken not. about what the act that was done, not about Reggie. Reggie Another remains your friend, I will hope, and a decent, wonderful individual. <laughs> but the act that you are speaking about yeah. to us is one that you believe was good enough to tell any AG, I should walk away. Yeah, you should walk away. Yeah, yeah. And, and, that doesn't and, and mean you dislike him. You're not I saying you dislike him, or he's a person to stay away from, or he yeah. suffers with a communicable disease that if he gets close to you, you might fall into everlasting sleep. Of, I know what you that's how they behave, you know. But what I'm trying to tell you, though, is I was don't I don't want you to lose sight of my disappointment in Martin Daly when he said he couldn't think of what could he say to 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 um to justify Reggie staying on. So he came up with, well, you know, At he just he let him ever do. He apologized. I mean, um, Martin Daly. Martin Daly, you you you're an influencer. In this country. You, you're an influencer. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah. Because you wanted, yeah. so uh, because you didn't want him to lose his work. Yeah, I hope more and more sensible people would know where to turn to. From the time someone does that, people whom I would normally listen to, not after what a guidance, but I'd like to hear their perspective on the matter. When they do these sorts of things, you know, you, you turn away from them, you know. I don't want to hear them on another similar matter or any other matter in the future. You know? Exactly. Because you have just qualified yourself to exactly. not be taken seriously again in the future. And that's it. You just forget them. And as we that's started the show by saying, when you're off the, the limelight, you're not in the media for a month and a half, when they try to come back, people say, hey, look who tried to make a comeback. That's how you had to treat them. You know? And then they come back trying to talk about, you know, like they have this, this whole hole 
on what is right and what is wrong and they want to come no don't forget what they did and what caused them to have to be absent from the media and the conversation <laughs> for a long time and keep them there that is where they should be after they have done something such as that it's most disappointing and as we have said karen we speak for the 80 percent. the gig is over yeah. and when you continue yeah, eh? to, to the small man we must be able to say, stop it stop it and the small man ought not to listen to those people anymore for guidance and leadership. Yeah, in any don't let them fool you. Don't, make, that, don't let them make a fool of you and use you. Yeah. Don't Karen, let them use you. Next week, we'll discuss the trade union leaders said oh. they're not going back to the tripartite table. You I heard thought, that, right? No, I they thought, you know, I didn't tell you anything that I... No, we, I feel you can't get them to come on to talk about Warren. No, they promised to come on. I, I will call the manager. The manager had assured me that they are coming on. Um, but it's not my style to continue to, you know, force an issue. I understand. But, but, yeah, yeah. But, but you, you know what? Purpose. Yeah, yeah. But we will get them on, kind of. We can get them on next Monday. I'll come here to a letter uh, for the trade union leaders. <laughs> because you saw some of them here before, right? Um, whenever they're in trouble, they call you know, and they want to come on the show because they want to talk. That right? when they want to get their message out. When yeah. we want yeah. to hear something that that is important to us, they don't want to come. But when it is important to them, they call in here. And when they say, "Okay, we can do it week after," they say, "No, no, no, no. We want to give it this now, you know. You know, I mean, come on." And then they let them in. So I'm saying, if they if they are not here next week, I would remind them of our history. Scripture say, if you read Hezekiah in the great Bible, it would tell you Hezekiah reminded the Lord when he told him through Isaiah the prophet that he was going to die after he got sick. Hezekiah turned to the wall and reminded the Lord of how good he has been to the Lord and his family and they've been worshipping him and so on. The Lord told Isaiah, go back in and tell Hezekiah, not only would I make him live, but I'll give him 15 more years. What is the point I'm trying to make here? It is good to remind people about past events. It can help them change their minds. So I'll talk to the trade union leaders if they didn't come on next week. Oh, the BC, you supposed to be one to come and tell us what, yeah, why, and why they didn't, why this thing was signed nearly a year before they didn't know about yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. And if they know who we're buying the, 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 the fuel from, I mean, if yes, we don't know, yes. if it's one for solution, no, it should be them. It you know, we them. need to know, and they must tell us. And we have a why right to know. We could have the refinery up and running today, and what is the true situation? Because guess, what, because guess what, Richard? We mind uh -huh. our business. We might, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Shera, whenever we reach, I am so saddened. I have to wait till quite next week. Oh, my dear, me. before I could see you again and listen to you, you know. But you know what? I would start to count the clock down. I will do as I always do. <laughs> Daddy, ma, can you hear him foolish? Does he stand me, Daddy, ma? <laughs> I'm listening. Daddy, ma, can you hear him? Yeah, I'm hearing you. <laughs> Daddy, oh man, you see how people can trample if I could say so on top of your goodness. <laughs> I will genuinely sad and listen to Karen until next week. Karen, I will <laughs> miss you. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> I leave that I leave that for your wife to see. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you just put, go on, um, go on. <laughs> yes, take it easy. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Karen. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Straight ahead, you got news, Richard. All right. Take it easy, Daddy Mark. I'll listen. Okay, great. Power 102 Digital. Yeah, yeah. We sound like.